Hi, I'm Andre, and in this video, for once, I'll be talking to you about what is supposedly my area of expertise, or at least of study, which is artificial intelligence. And here we have a nice little 2001 poster for that. So I am a PhD student at Stanford, where I research, or <laughs> at least try to research, learning algorithms for robotics. So I, I kind of keep up with the cutting edge developments in AI and in AI research. And in this video, we'll be talking about a recent development that got a lot of people excited, got a lot of conversations going, and that maybe I can provide some more context on as a researcher that could benefit people, hopefully. <laughs> this video is based on an article I helped edit and put out recently titled GPT-3, an AI breakthrough but not coming for your job, which is linked down below. Or you can just watch this to get the gist. So, we're gonna talk about GPT-3, which is an AI model. It's a little algorithm where you give it some input and get some output. In this case, it's basically doing autocomplete. So the input is text, words, and the output is a prediction of which words are most likely to come out next. This is known as a language model and is a very old idea. And GPT-3 is a very, very big state-of-the-art language model trained by the company OpenAI recently. And what was interesting about it is that they showed that just by scaling up existing techniques, they could make it not just work better, but to also do some very cool things that people haven't really been uh, aware was possible before. Now you can train this model just to predict which words are likeliest to come next. You basically feed it the entire content of the internet and then the model is trained to predict uh, this autocomplete function. And then it turns out that you can make this model do very specific things. So you can, for instance, give it some input and tell it to negate the input, uh, to switch it from positive to negative. Or you can uh, ask it to give you answers to questions. Or you can do all sorts of things. And unlike uh, before, where usually when you do this sort of thing, when you want to switch the task of your model, you need to retrain it on new data and update the parameters. Here, it turns out that because it's so big, just by feeding it some input examples, one or two examples of the task you wanted to do, that is enough. And the model is already capable of a ton of things that it wasn't explicitly trained to do. So, this model was announced. There was a paper that OpenAI put out in late May. But uh, all the excitement didn't quite start then. It started a bit later. And that's because OpenAI put out access to the model via an API and invited some people to go in and play the model and see if they could find any ways to use it to build applications on top of it. And about a month, a bit after uh, when this beta became available, people on the internet and particularly on Twitter started showcasing things you can do with GPT-3 quite unexpected things. So in the paper, you had all these uh, kind of traditional tasks of language comprehension, of natural language processing. But on Twitter, people started showcasing really fancy things of you can make GPT-3 write JavaScript code for you. You can make it essentially generate websites, right? And again, without explicitly retraining it for the task, just by giving it a few examples, it was already capable of doing it because it saw presumably a lot of code on the internet and already knew something about code. So that's one example and uh, there were many other cool applications that started showing up and people started getting very impressed. You know, you don't expect a model trained just to autocomplete uh, some text to be able to produce websites for you given an English description. You don't expect uh, these kinds of demos to be possible. So that's kind of where we start. That's what happened, GPT-3 came out, there were some demos, and people started getting excited. And that's when the conversation really kicked off. So media coverage kicked off. There were many articles about GPT-3, many pointing out that it's very impressive, but also limited. 
some pointing out that it has uh, now some commercial possibilities that are interesting, and some actually commenting that it's a little scary because you could use it to fake text and make it seem like humans are writing things when they aren't, or you can uh, replace writers and the people writing these uh, think pieces could then uh, be automated by artificial intelligence and you had these kinds of op-eds come out in the press. At the same time, uh, again after the demos, researchers started getting access to it or started commenting on it and the discussion developed with researchers showing that uh, in fact it was pretty impressive what GPT-3 could do with just a few examples in terms of natural language comprehension. It could do some pretty tricky things and uh, it was actually surprising to researchers to see that just by training on autocomplete you can make it do these fairly difficult tasks. Some others commented that maybe uh, it's a little early to release an API and uh, let some people build applications on top of it given that this isn't very well understood. We train this model on all the internet and now you're using it to build applications and you don't really know exactly what it will do for any given input. It might give you biased, racist, sexist, problematic outputs. So that was another part of the discussion. And lastly, on the third side, uh, there were also discussions among sort of computer science people, hacker people, who were also very impressed, some to the point of saying that this is representative of really big uh, progress in AI and getting us closer to artificial general intelligence, sort of like this human level AI. Uh, and some actually started posting that this model was making them uh, anxious about their career prospects. So it was, uh, there were conversations of like, I'm starting to get into computer science, but I'm worried that this technology is now coming out that can write websites and things and there won't be a career for me in a decade or something like that. Seeing that, I thought I should really try and uh, address this worry. And the simple response is maybe it's not time to worry about your job yet, even though this is very impressive. So here's why. We know that this model is very impressive and it can do many things. And it can do something that maybe you would not expect an AI model to do without too much training, like, you know, given a simple description of a thing, write some JavaScript for you, which seems like something that, you know, you pay a human to do. But at the same time, while it can do these things, there's a lot of limitations that must be understood about what it can't do uh, to be able to uh, assess whether we should be worried about uh, it being human level or replacing anyone. So personally, I think the biggest limitation which must be understood is that this thing has no long-term memory. It's not like a person where if you talk to an employee or a coworker one day, next day, hopefully they'll remember what you discussed. No, over successive interactions with this thing, it forgets everything. There's no long-term buildup of experience, of context, of understanding, nothing. So that's the main limitation. And there's a bunch of other ones. So for instance, it has this autocomplete function, right? And the amount of text you can input at the beginning is pretty limited. It's only a few sentences. And that must also encapsulate the examples of the task. So you can't give it a whole textbook for of input <laughs> to condition it on whatever task you want it to do, it's pretty small still. Moving on, there's also another issue, which is it can only work with text. So there is a lot of difficulty, a lot of challenge to extending this to what people naturally do, which is reason with sound and images and text and can communicate in all of these mediums to be able to work together. GPT-3 is trained and architecturally can only be trained to work with text. And to extend it beyond that would be a major challenge. And then just to round things out a few more, it is not very interpretable. So we, we can't really interpret why AI models do things all the time, especially at the scale. 
uh, which might matter if you're trying to build a product. You want to be able to tell why it sometimes doesn't work or uh, does weird things. It's also not a reliable, so you can't necessarily say this will work 99.9% .9 of the time and not give me weird AI outputs, which is something we've actually already seen. There's been cases of uh, Google's Translate actually providing weird biblical prophecy outputs for weird inputs, and that's something that you can definitely expect could happen with G GPT-3 with various contexts. And lastly, it's also slow. It's, it's pretty slow given some input to provide an output. It's not like a human who can respond to um, you know, some sentences, some words uh, pretty fast. Um, and the last one is in particular, you know, if you're thinking this is human level, uh, if it's getting us closer to human level AI, uh, our brains are still pretty impressive. We can process images and sounds and ideas faster than this thing can, and we're doing a lot more. So all of these limitations must be understood and must be noted before you start worrying that this thing is so fancy and this thing is, you know, heralding the coming of general artificial intelligence and human level artificial intelligence and that, you know, so many jobs will be doomed. Now, of course, yes, the technology will be improved. There will be more progress. And this is a real breakthrough. These results are really impressive. But these limitations that I pointed out aren't easy to address. They require you know, new ideas, new approaches, and we may not be able to fix them for quite a while. And what that means is that instead of costing people jobs, more than likely GPT-3 will just change the way people do jobs. So that, for instance, uh, some of the busy work, some of the easy, things of writing very boilerplate code or very boilerplate writing, GPT-3 can help automate. But the high level decision making of what needs to be done, how it should be done, etc., that is still gonna be up to you and me. It's gonna be up to people to actually you know, direct the AI model to do the things that need to be done. So it might make you more efficient, might make your job a little bit uh, less tiresome, hopefully, and that's the hope for all of AI, really. But it's not likely, I don't think, to replace any programmers in the current form that you're seeing. So there you have it. We don't have a 2000 level artificial general intelligence quite yet. We have some pretty impressive progress with GPT-3, and it's really cool to see these sorts of things. But whenever you see, you know, really impressive progress, you must ask yourself, what are its limitations? Uh, am I maybe being overly impressed and not noticing some of the things that it cannot do that humans can do often easily? And I hope I made that clear in this case. And please comment if you have any questions or if you have any points you think I didn't quite address well.